Our guest today is Hector Del Aguila. Alan, tell us a little bit about our guest. Well, I've known Hector for probably 20 years now, and Hector has a lot of experience in radio frequency energy, HERF, high intensity radio frequencies, lightning protection, EMC, EMI. Uh, he used to work with the Air Force for a number of years as a civilian, uh, protecting a lot of aircraft and doing a lot of testing on aircraft. And I met him at Eclipse Aircraft when he came over to Eclipse on the civilian world where they were designing a brand new light jet for the industry. So fill me in a little bit about electromagnetic uh, interference. So what is that? Why is that important on aircraft? Like, what does that do? As they keep, uh, I mean, it's not just safety, but it's all sorts of stuff, right? Yeah, it, it's 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 a combination of safety and nuisance problems. Uh, if there's any sort of electrical uh, energy on the aircraft itself that interferes with a system you care about, like the the radios or headphones, it becomes a nuisance thing. Uh, and system to system on an airplane, if one system is making a lot of a lot of noise, electrical noise, it, it can interfere with another system. In the case of things that Hector was doing uh, way back at, at the Air Force lab. They were looking at external threats also. Uh, so somebody trying to jam your aircraft or someone trying to uh, in inter intentionally interfere with the operation of the aircraft externally, all the way up to, um, I think, nuclear EMP stuff. So very high-level energy. They did a lot of research back in the 80s and 90s, and, and Hector was involved in a good bit of that. And Hector is also a DER. Can you go and do a little, just explain a little bit about what DERs do with the FAA? Yeah, so it's a designated engineering representative. So you're a delegate of the FAA. You don't work for the FAA. Like the FAA does not send you a paycheck, which would be nice. But instead, you're sort of a subject matter expert that they've uh, delegated responsibility to to look at engineering drawings, engineering designs to make sure they comply with the regulations. So you're sort of that intermediary between the aircraft company and the design engineers to the engineers that are working at the FAA. So you, you, you're, you're that go-between between industry and the certification side. Okay. So Hector's a DER and he was doing that for Eclipse. Um, so like, how do you get selected to be one of those? You're a subject matter expert. You know enough about the uh, particular aspects you're working with the a FAA with. So you're saying that the, the FAA has scouts, like the scouts in the stands, they're just like got a little, their little radar gun and their their clipboard. Yeah, it's it's actually not very different than that. The, as the FAA uh, engineers and the certification offices runs across different people in industry, it's not particularly hard to tell who is the subject matter experts for things like HERF and Lightning because it's such a narrow field. So when you run across somebody with Hector's experience, and he had a ton of experience yeah. before he got to Eclipse, all they had to do was look at his resume and talk to him. And I, th I think, if I remember correctly, he had given a presentation in front of the FAA, and it became immediately obvious that yeah. Hector knew a lot about the, about his subject matter. Yeah, so with with HIRF, uh, HERF, um, EMI, and his... Uh, status as a, as a DER. I mean, he's just, uh, he's just like the, the guy on the electromagnetic and, and, uh, and lightning protection side, huh? Yeah. There's a small sliver of society that, that can do what Hector can do. Uh, I don't know what the number is across the, the FAA, but it's gotta be 25 or less people in the country that can do. It, it's probably less that can do what he does. He, because he has that air force experience beforehand and then the industry experience on the civilian side, that's an unusual combination. Not many people have that, unless you've worked for someone like Boeing in the military side or Lockheed on the military side and then transition over. There's very few people who have both. He has both, a lot of experience in both. Yeah, can, can you go into that just a little more? So I know he, he started with uh, with the Air Force, but he's been, I mean, he's done research. I mean, go into a little bit more detail about, about Hector's uh, background. So Hector uh, is originally from Peru, and then he went to college at, in Texas at Texas Agriculture and Industry, which I believe became part of the Texas A&M system after okay. he left. So that was a long time ago. And then uh, he went to work at, at the Air Force Labs uh, in Albuquerque. There's a couple, and, and he worked for, essentially became an Air Force Research Lab which is where he ended up working before he came over to Eclipse. So he worked on a lot of um, communication system design things, verifying system operation. Um, the Air Force has a sort of independent groups from industry. So private industry, for the most part, designs and builds all these uh, systems to the Air Force specs. And then the Air Force has a separate groups that 
verify their operation and then make them mission capable. So like on the F-16, for example, they know the F-16 was designed to spec, but then once it gets in service, the Air Force does uh, improvements to it, mods to it, based on the missions that it has to carry out, and Hector would have been involved in a lot of those things. Gotcha. Well, it was a really interesting conversation. He's been through a lot in the Eclipse uh, the Eclipse startup and the aircraft they were creating. I mean, that's a, a super interesting story with him trying to get that, get that certified. So, all right, well, without further ado, we're going to jump into our conversation with Hector Del Aguila. And, and that was a, that was that was Eclipse, right? That, the the that, company that was, was Eclipse. Eclipse. Yeah, yeah. That was and, Eclipse. And, and Eclipse was a uh, essentially a startup, if you think of an aircraft yeah. company. It, yeah, it was a the startup. Ground up. Right. So they had they had no history. Yeah, they had no history before. It was they had started with they were funded by um, out basically Silicon Valley, Seattle monies. Um, to, to form the thing. And, and what, were, what was the revolutionary uh, thing they were bringing to the table? Yeah, Microsoft, uh, that was, Eclipse was found by, uh, some, uh, by, a, by a, it's Microsoft, uh, uh, one of the, uh, I guess he was one of the founders or, or close to it uh, in Microsoft. Uh, Ray, Ray uh, I forget his name at the moment, but anyway. Are, he, you, talking about, are you talking about Vern Rayburn? Vern Rayburn, yeah. Vern Rayburn, yeah. He, he sure. was part of Microsoft, right? As far as I, yeah, it, yeah, and stuff like that. So that was an eye opener for me when I went to work from from the Department of uh, Defense, from uh, a government organization, to to a uh, to a commercial institution, especially in a startup company. I didn't realize, uh, I didn't realize the uh, you know what I was getting into at that time, I guess. That would be yeah. it. And uh, uh, although to me it seemed that, you know, because of what they need were, it was right on the area that I did a lot of research on and I knew it oh, yeah. I could be I could be a good help to them. Uh, however, I didn't know much about the regulatory aspects of it. Yeah. And uh, that was the eye opener for me. And, and uh, as, as far as what, uh, a company like this has to go through to be to be able to certify an airplane. Well, what did they what did they what they tell what they tell you when when they hired you when they brought you they brought you in or you knew somebody that was working there and they they said hey Hector we've got this new startup uh, we've got uh, funding <laughs> yeah, to to build this airplane what do they what do they tell you when you walked across the street there to check this place out? Oh well, yeah, the way that uh, well the. Somehow they got my name from someone I don't remember at that point, and and I got a call out of the blue from a recruitment person at at this in this particular organization, and they asked me if I was interested and uh, you know if I was to, to you know to send them my resume and so forth yeah. and so on. And I did. Yeah. Yeah. And within a week or so, if I remember correctly, within a week or two, it, I got a phone call and I said, you know, we would like to talk to you. And do you mind coming over and spending a few hours with us? Well, a few hours ended up being the whole day. <laughs> uh, uh, because I interviewed with everybody of, of all the departments, not only with the, elect uh, with the uh, electrical uh, uh, system department, but uh, with also with the mechanical guys and, and, and everybody else. And it was an interesting, uh, 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 it was an interesting uh, set of uh, uh, circumstances. And 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 uh, after about you know going through an interview throughout the day with different people. Uh, you know, some they realized that I knew what the uh, they, they realized that I knew what my expertise. You know, that was I was. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, oh, you're clearly the expert. Uh, yeah, you knew yeah, you, you knew I, your I, area. I, I, I knew the area uh, and how it applies on aircraft and so forth and so on yeah. because of my experience on uh, military aircraft and, and so forth and so on and doing protection. On those aircraft, from the electromagnetic standpoint, and, 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 and from their perspective too, Hector, I think they were looking. They did not, from my outside look at that program, mm -hmm. they were looking for the smartest people they could find. Not necessarily people who had a lot of well, regulatory well, yeah. experience. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, the uh, as a matter of fact that uh, uh, 
uh, I realized once I joined the team that that team was just awesome. It was a, I learned a lot from them uh, about aircraft in general, about design, aircraft design, the details of it. Uh, you know, it, it was awesome. And, and uh, yeah, the, this company went ahead and recruited the best they could, they, they could find in industry. And the salaries were great, but the amount of work was also great. So did they uh, did they offer you stock as part of that bringing you across yes, the? Yes, yeah, that was okay. that was one of the uh, enticing things. A part of uh, the salaries being, you know, uh, good salaries and, and uh, uh, more than uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, that particular company and Intel uh, 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 semiconductor company here in and there is a plant uh, Intel plant here. They yep. were the two. Uh, uh, the two uh, uh, companies that would pay the most, engineering-wise, and and so yeah, the in order to recruit the people they wanted to recruit, they had to offer that, and, and in addition to having good salaries, the uh, they will offer you stocks on the company and this and that, which gives you an incentive to you know to continue to work and stuff like that. And if the company is successful, then everybody benefits from that, right? So. So is there uh, a, a pressure, Hector, that you felt with that? Like with, all right, I ha now have a, you know, a piece of this company, essentially. Um, do you feel like that's almost like them getting you to buy in more so that you feel like you have to work those extra long hours that you really can't go home at a normal nine to five time? Not that that was their intention, but did you feel an extra pressure added on to having equity in the company? Uh, well, it, not so much the pressure, but a vested interest, I guess. Yeah, uh, I should say it, and and uh, and yeah, you you know, the, obviously working for a company like that, like I said, it was an eye opener because I didn't realize how long hours you had to work because they all work to a very tight, tight schedules. Uh, certifying an aircraft from the ground up is very difficult, especially if never done it. And this, in, in this case, this company, uh, that was the first aircraft they were uh, they were designing. It's not like they had a you know, they had a, uh, 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 experience on doing that. So, and that's the reason they were hiring people that had experience, not only on uh, yeah. the certification side, but also on the engineering side right, to make sure that things go without a glitch, right? And engineering wise, of course, the, uh, they were good, uh, very good engineers and awesome engineers and they would design things and, and like every and then the people that were more knowledgeable that the certification aspects of it you know they would guide us about you know what things could be done what things could be done although the design could be the best design that you can that you can produce you know if at the end you may not be able to certify yeah right? so all of that uh, comes into play and and that yeah. that the, the thing about that airplane, Hector, I think that just so everybody gets some background on it, because you, you and I sort of well, you lived it more than I did, but we we right. both were on that program a little bit. Uh, was that airplane was like the first light jet? That was, that was the first, real, right? That, like a production sense, and they and it was going to have Williams engines on it, and the Williams engines were sort of prototype engines that had come from another industry into, right. and that was, and in fact, Williams had actually started the program. Wasn't that the original one that started was Williams had started the program, then it moved to Albuquerque and right. became bigger I than Williams. They, right. I believe they, I can't remember exactly, Alan, but I believe they started somewhere. Weren't they in Michigan? In Michigan, I believe it was. Yeah, I think they were in Michigan when I first remember yeah. talking to them right. and then they moved to Albuquerque because it's a lot warmer and it's a, it's beautiful in Albuquerque. Right. Uh, okay. But the, the the key to that airplane was it was going to be a low cost, very efficient, uh, like an air taxi situation. And it because of the computational power and the know how from the engineers that had come from Silicon Valley, it was going to be very easy to fly. In fact, that airplane had its own uh, flight control computer that they they designed, uh, right. an avionics system which they were designing their own avionics systems, and. It's, it's they, not but it didn't end up. It didn't end up that way, right? They they were trying to make their own avionics systems at one point, right? It, uh, right. And, and, yeah, they, they they ended up outsourcing some of that. But one of the things yeah. that Eclipse did is they 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 were the ones that uh, developed the uh, the software uh, yeah. that basically communicates with all these systems and stuff like that. 
and in uh, uh, that was Windows based, right? That was a Windows based software uh, integration system. If I remember right, it, uh, I'm not to recall exactly, but uh, you may be right, Alan. I don't recall. It's been a okay. little while since that thing went. But but anyway, the uh, the software guys were were amazing, and yeah, yes, and, 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 <laughs> and uh, were. everybody else, uh, everybody, you know, it, it was a very that the people, the everybody had a goal in mind, and you know, and and yeah. and, and it was awesome to that. see the dedication that they, everybody put in. You know, from the management side all the way down to to the tech, you know, to the technician side, from the uh, you know, and the, and the engineering side, and even the human resources people. Uh, now, it was an awesome company to work with. Huh? Well, you were one of the first places that I remember going to where the word on the street was it was like Silicon Valley, and that uh, mm. you had uh, free soda machines and snack area, oh, yeah. and, <laughs> and all, all the accoutrements that come with that, and. Right, and, and typically, yeah, they would uh, they will give you so yeah, yeah, everything was pretty much free there. Yeah, as far and the, the idea was, I guess, to try to get uh, people to to uh, you know to minimize people going out or something like that to, to uh, 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 so that you could spend more time within the uh, you know within the uh, the uh, the facility, the working and stuff like that, and and that was. Uh, and as the time progressed, when you get close to certification, it was awesome. Everybody, everybody, including uh, including human resources, uh, everybody was was you know worked very very hard, um, uh, long hours, and, and long they, they hours, used yeah. to feed us. They you know they uh, bring all these nice lunches and, and you know and dinners and things like that, so people <laughs> could eat. And, and yeah. at the end, I, I they even. Uh, you know, rented hotels around the area so people didn't have to go to, if they left to, if they live too far. They oh, I remember that. That's right. I that? forgot that. Yeah, I do. I do so, remember that. You could. There was a hotel down the street. You didn't have to go home. Right. Yeah, right. That, right. Yeah. And, and yeah. So well, it, uh, you came. You came into that program at what point? Because they had done a first flight. Did you come in just after first flight when they're going uh, to the Pratt and Whitney when, engines? When, yes, uh, I came when when I. Uh, yeah, when the uh, Pratt and Whitney engines started to, they decided to replace the uh, the, uh, the Williams uh, engines. The Williams yeah. engine and the and, and, and the uh, Pratt came in. Uh, that's when I jumped in. And then, then when I was there, uh, they didn't have the expertise on the electromagnetic area. Yes. No, and, and, I agree with you. You know, they they hired uh, uh, LTI to to uh, they were the consultants in the uh, lightning side. Right, and uh, Hector's but, talking about lightning technologies and the place technology, I used to work right. at too. Yeah, I was working at lightning right. technologies. That's how I met, that's right. how I met Hector. Uh, at that time, right. And that's when I met you, Alan, I believe. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, and you and, uh, and Andy Plummer. And, yeah. and anyway, the, uh, uh, but they, they lacked the expertise on, on the EMI side, electromagnetic interference, and, and particularly on the uh, high intensity radi radiated fields area. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Which was, uh, <laughs> which is something that I did, what I did when I worked in the Department of Defense, but at a, at a much higher, higher level than what HERF is all about. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. and, and, uh, and it was an eye opener for them, you know, to realize that they had to do certain things to be able to, to meet some of, some of the standards. Well, they, they came in at a very time. weird time. You, you, you happened to come in at a, you came at a, I, I always felt like you came in at a very stressful time because they had done first, if I remember correctly, had done first I, flight. They had, they had yeah, one flight, flight and that was yeah. it. One flight and it was it. They couldn't, they, the Williams engines were struggling. They had difficulty starting them, if I remember. Right. And then the decision was made, we're going to remove Williams, we're going to get Pratt & Whitney in here, and Pratt & Whitney has to develop a brand new engine. It wasn't like there was something off the shelf. They had to go out and create engines specific for this aircraft. And you came in in the middle of that, and so there's, now there's chaos going on in the engineering, and there's, there's concern about funding, how long is this going to last, how much is going to raise yeah. the price of the aircraft, because Pratt & Whitney yeah. was a lot more expensive, right? And so you come out of the Air Force on a, on a very, in a steady job and you had climbed the ladder because you're a smart person. <laughs> you did. I mean, right. you're, cl you're clearly a very yeah. bright person. And you, you, you come over to a, Eclipse at a very stressful time, in my opinion. And, and then 
you, you also walk in a situation where they don't have a lot of expertise in the area that you're supposed to go f get certified. Yeah, Can you explain like how, how stressful was that? I mean, that had to be off the charts stressful. Well, well to, to, you know, to just to put it simply, I, I, typically I was the one in charge of, of making sure from the electromagnetic standpoint the aircraft was being designed to, to withstand and to meet all the regulatory requirements and at that point, so I had to learn the, the regulatory requirements as, as I was going along and, uh, and to make sure that the design was towards that, meeting those goals. And, right, because you, you and, hadn't worked in the FAA world at all at that point. You no, had done I, no, I, military standard stuff for the most part, right? right? And yeah, so the yeah, rules I, and all that were new still. Yeah, the rules were new, uh, but the processes in on the area that Alan, you and I work, which is yeah. DMC or yeah. AMC world, uh, were pretty similar because it's true. Uh, That's yeah, true. Yeah, you know, you have military standards like uh, you know, uh, four sixty one, four sixty one, four sixty four, things like that, which yeah. are aircraft related. Yeah, uh, and then you go and. and to the commercial side, of course, uh, it's, it's you know it's 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 a little, it's a little bit more stringent, I, I believe, in my opinion. Oh, I I would agree. I would agree with you there. Right. So it's, and and so I I I was very confident on the on the engineering side, but like I said, I had to learn the regulatory aspects of it, and 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 so I had to work long long hours. Uh, you know, especially the first uh, you know six months or so. Once I started to become a little bit more familiar with that, you know, what we they had to deal not only from the design standpoint, but also to how to meet the regulatory aspects of it. And luckily, in my case, uh, after about a year or so, I was uh, uh, the, the uh, about a year, year and a half or so, the uh, uh, the FAA certification office came to visit. Uh, uh, the company to see the progress, and one of the areas that they were uh, uh, they were interested in, in in learning on how how we were doing was on the uh, uh, electromagnetic compatibility side. Yeah, and so I had to prepare, uh, and I since I was the lead for the entire company for that area, <laughs> I had to prepare my presentation and so forth. So so I yeah. went and you know uh, and this was. Was, it was my first direct uh, uh, contact face to face with the uh, forward ACO management yeah. and, and engineering yeah. side, and I was lucky that uh, they liked, uh, you know, they liked uh, what I, you know, what I presented, and and uh, uh, you know, they because after the meeting the uh, the head of the uh, the lead uh, of the uh, of the uh, electrical system side uh on the FAA uh, after the meeting uh he came and talked to me one on one and and he mentioned to me that you know that he was pleased that uh, eclipse had somebody like me there <laughs> yeah. and and, yeah. and uh, at that point he asked me if i would be interested in becoming a der and that's a designated engineer representative right so that's and, a, a ticket and, from the faa right to, to approve designs or recommend approved designs right yeah. and so you know it, uh, i was you know, I was surprised, but, uh, but, but you know, by the, the good reception, and and I told him that I would consider it uh, because there are, you know, there are, uh, as a DEI, they have awesome responsibilities. I mean, yeah, you know, because you are you approving things, right? And and after, I guess, after he talked to me, he talked to the uh, head of certification at that time, and 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 I was approached to. To, if I really wanted from the company side mm -hmm. to become a company DER. And after some thoughts and, and this and that, I decided, okay, uh, that's, that's something that I uh, will be interested in. And so. Did they, did they that, tell you? Did they tell you? Did, I, I remember the certification engineer at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and right. I remember when that was all going on. And, and uh, Randy, I, Randy uh, Griffin. Yeah, is Randy, is Randy yeah. right? And. Uh, my recollection on that, and of course, it's you know over time, thoughts about it change. But 
it was it was um, you were an innocent bystander in that, in my opinion. Like you're a very knowledgeable person. You knew the material. But I'm not sure they explained to you the position it was going to put you in. So you're between the <laughs> FAA and the management of the company. You're between right. those two. And, you, and oh, you're getting so you're like the bad put, guy. <clears throat> yeah, there's no way you're going to win in that situation, right? Um, yeah. and, and, and I remember those. I remember seeing other, because I knew a bunch of the guys at Eclipse or engineers at the Eclipse, and they weren't all guys, um, that it, it, it's stressful. It was very stressful time. And and Hector had to be in, in the middle of it, and maybe Hector, you you, you lived it. What 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 kind yeah, of pressure was on you? Well, it's it, it, it's it's just it's it's just the pressure is just amazing because it, I mean, you know, it, it's very stressful. The whole thing was very stressful, you know, because you're working for a company and and you have some design in mind and this and that, but at the same time you're representing the FAA, and and so you have to you had to. To you know, to uh, put the respective hats whenever you're doing something, right? Uh, yeah. And, and then sometimes you know, because you everybody wants to certify and everybody wants to do that, uh, you know, management would push and then you know and things like that. But uh, there are certain there are certain boundaries that they cannot uh, pass, right? And even right. even as an employee and. Yeah, and true. they knew it, and of course, and they were yeah. they were respectful of that, and and you know sometimes from time to time you know things got a little bit heated and so forth and so on. And I have to remind <laughs> them, I have to remind them, you know, yeah. you know. Uh, right now I have my FAA hat, guys. You know. Yeah. Do you know who you're talking to? You're talking to the FAA. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you don't you don't ever you don't say it like that, but uh, yeah, you, yeah. you do essentially say like. And there have been times in my career when I've had to say, you know, this has gone beyond the boundaries of where acceptable is. Uh, we can't. Right. You're putting you're putting a lot of pressure on me to sign something which I can't approve. And here's why I can't approve right. it. It's like I just don't feel like it. Like here's here's the regulation. Right. Your yeah. design doesn't meet that. And yeah. we can have a discussion yeah. about how you can meet it, but either it does or it doesn't. It's kind of a right. go right. no go. Right. But but the good thing, you know, to be fair, uh, you know. Uh, they would understand that, and you know they would push. But you know they, but but you had uh, built relationships would, with these. You had built relationships. I think about Eclipse. I thought oh, was interesting. Unlike some bigger airplane companies, like they were your friends. They're, 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 oh yeah, they're, oh yeah. Right. Absolutely. So you're telling your friend. Yeah. You're telling your friends. You spend a lot of time together. You've eaten pizza in the hangar, right. and you, you you go out and drink on the weekends and whatever. And then <laughs> all of a sudden, you're telling this this friend of yours. No, we're right. not doing this, and the and the person is paying you on top of it, right? Uh, right, right. What does that yeah, feel yeah. like when that happens? Well, it, 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 like I said, it's, it's stressful, right? And 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 because you try to, to you know, the the, the thing is, uh, you got to make sure that you know that uh, whatever hat you're wearing at a time, uh, you know, that you you explain to them why certain things couldn't fly. And, and this and that, and then they will ask you for ways to, you know, how to go and and expedite things or something, which is fair, yeah. right? That's and, fair. That's that's and, really fair. Right. And, and 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 then you will look at uh, vehicles and stuff like that that that, 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 that uh, maybe design changes that help a little bit, that maybe easier to implement things like that, mm -hmm. right? But uh, but but the bottom line is, uh, you know, uh, because you were recommending approval at the time or things like that from the, from the company standpoint, you got to make sure that, uh, you know, that, uh, that everything that was being done was, uh, was going to be, uh, acceptable to the FAA and, and, and to yourself as a, as a representative. Right. And so you, and you're like having said, these, you have these conversations in, in, in meetings and you're getting drawn into meetings you probably don't want to be at and, and absolutely. Yeah. There's confrontations because, I mean, that are happening. It, it, this is not necessarily always a civil discourse. It isn't like we're having these top level engineering. It's not a, you're going for your doctoral thesis. This is, right. Hey, there's hundreds of millions of dollars in this program. You're stopping it from completion. Explain yourself. Right. And yeah, would you right. like to, you know, be working for Burger King tomorrow? Because uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah. in a very unique position because you gave right. up a very lucrative career path to come over to Eclipse to begin with. You yeah, had, in that had, sense, had, uh, it was a very secure thing, right? And, yeah. uh, and stuff like that. I could stay there and retire, but uh, 
like I said, uh, but at the same time, I was looking for something more challenging at that point sure. when I left. Right. And, 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 uh, what, and what did your wife say when you came home? I, oh. I know what my wife says when she, you come home from those those rough days. I mean, what are, what is she saying to you? Like, well, forget it, you know, or no, bear through it, or no. Luckily, you know, my wife is very supportive. At that time, you know, she's she, the way she put it. She put it was, you know, are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? And, uh, and, and, yeah. And, and then I said, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. And then, then yeah. she finally said, oh, heck, you know, that's your decision. And I'll, you know, I'll back you up. So, and, and that was the end of it. And after that, yeah. you know, well, when she saw me the first few months that when I started working at uh, this company, at this new company, she realized how stressed out I was. And throughout, yeah. throughout the entire time that I was there, you know, there were times that were a little bit, you know, uh, not as stressful, but. But, but the majority yeah. of time is, especially towards the end, when, when you get Very close stressful. to the certification date, yeah. you know, and especially well, it, when you, yeah, especially Alan, when you have an issue that belongs right. to you <laughs> and you can't find a way of, you know, get it, to, to, get a way to fix yeah. it, and stuff yeah. like that. And, well, and, and you and, had and, kids in school too. It isn't like you just, oh, just it's you and your wife, you had kids in school. So, yeah. you know, you gotta, you, you, you need this job. This job has got to happen. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I couldn't quit, right? And, uh, right. And, and besides, you know, uh, to be honest with you, I, re I really liked it. And the reason I liked it, 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 the pressure was there, fine, you know, all that. But the people was amazing. The yeah. engineering, the engineering yeah. talent was amazing. And I yeah. made so many friends, you know, to this date, you know, yeah. and, and, and uh, that I still communicate, you know, I still rely on and blah, 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 blah. And okay, it's a small so world. Did you, re you realize yeah. it's a small world uh, that you see the same yeah. type of, or the same people go from program to program to program. So yeah. you got working with at Eclipse and then later on you see them on another program and it's just, a, it's just a small community. Right. Right. So Hector, and, and, uh, go ahead. If, if you were advising, you know, a, a young engineer just graduated, and he's entering, um, you know, the real world. Would you advise him to take a multitude of paths, like you did, or maybe take, you know, the, the private sector, the startup sector, or, you know, the military? Like, what, what, how would you, as you look back on your career as an engineer, what what advice would you give to a, a, a starting youngster? Well, they are they are two different worlds, right? And. Uh, 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 I, I believe that uh, you know the private sector uh, often uh, offers, uh, you know, at the time anyway, uh, financially the private sector was better than the government side. But my interest at that time was to work for the government. I, I, I made that my mind that I wanted to learn those things. And, and, and uh, uh, but as a young engineer, uh, you know, I would. Uh, suggest to them to think it through, you know, what they really want to do and, <laughs> yes. and what careful. is the focus that they yeah. want to, right, yeah. what the focus that they want to they, they put into, they want to get into a research type of environment or, or if, they know, if they don't know it, well, they will learn it uh, as they go through, right, and uh, well, can but you to get think stuck? it through. Like if you, if you choose, re if, can you get stuck on a track like that you can't get off of? Like if you chose research really early, no, can that, you kind of be that, stuck that, there? No, that the one, the, you know, the good thing about the engineering fields is that, that there is, there is uh, you know, there is a, uh, you have paths, in, in, you know, in both worlds. Uh, and you, you grow in both worlds. And, and nowadays, for example, on the military side, they had to, they had to catch up with the private sector. Because they were losing too many engineers, good engineers, yeah. right? Yeah, Especially yeah. on the research area, yeah. right? On the That's research true. area, Very yeah, true. that uh, you know, because those engineers are sought after by private industry like crazy, you know. Especially if you have some reputation, they hear from you and this and that. You get phone calls, and they try to entice you and stuff like that. Well, the government uh, trains you know, great employees because you, they you have uh, you just get the experience that you're not going to get in private industry. You just have that broader right. breadth of right. knowledge that you just don't get in inside an aircraft company. You're not going to get the experience yeah. you had. No way. And you can apply it. There. You can apply your your That's right. you learn on the government side, on the private side. But at that time, for example, because uh, the government was, with it, you know, uh, like I said, especially in the research engineering side, 
they were losing too many engineers to private industry because of the uh, difference in uh, in uh, uh, financial differences, right? Private industry used to you know pay more than the government side. But what happened was uh, uh, during those times, to in, in order to to prevent that from happening, the government had to co- had to catch up with uh, with the private sector, yeah. and at the end, it was very competitive at both ends, right? And uh, so, uh, but it's, it's uh, a different lifestyle, right? Working in a, oh, in a research environment versus a private industry. In a research environment, where you work in weekends and where you're traveling everywhere, or was it pretty yeah, it, steady? Well, it, 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 it depends on certain area, right? And uh, because sometimes, for example, we had to do some evaluation of of a platform somewhere, for mm. example. Like, no, that's okay. You know, yeah. Uh, for example, I used to go to England Air Force Base a lot and, and things like that, uh, right? Yep, uh, and we, yep, we, yep. we would spend like a month there doing research on F-15s mm-hmm. and F-16s and things like that, right? Uh, or sometimes uh, that we would go and uh, instead of going to a military uh, 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 place, we used to go to in uh, to a commercial site that built aircrafts, for example, F-16s in Fort Worth, right? Mm-hmm. And spend, yeah, sure. They spend a month or so doing research on on a platform and, and this and that, and, uh, because uh, uh, and and that's when you, you interact with private industry at the same time, right? But but right. it's not as it's not as stressful as it is on the private side, of course. Um, and and you, 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 you from time to time you work long hours, yes, uh, but yeah. um, it's not it's not that it's uh, it's not as constant as it is on on the private yeah, side. That makes sense. Yeah, and then on the private side too, I think one of the one of the things that I've noticed is you just don't. It's on the job training, very similar to what you went through. It's right. definitely on the job. It isn't like there's someone explaining uh, what's about to happen to you or the to, the, the technical things. You are having to pick it up as you go along. There's just no. Right. I, I, all the aircraft companies I've worked for, and I've worked for a number of them, that's the way that it goes. There's no there's no education. You're just gonna get it tossed into it. On the job, yeah. That, yeah. The good thing in uh, in the case of aircraft, uh, when I moved from the private sector, I mean, from the government to the private sector, uh, it was very different, right? Because on the government side, on the government side, the airplanes were already built and blah 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 blah. Yeah. On this, when then, when when I went to the private sector, especially when I start up, that is that is uh, you know that is building its first jet, uh, you know that a jet that is <laughs> right. very sophisticated. Yeah. yeah. A it's very sophisticated, very sophisti- sophisticated yeah. for yeah. for for what it uh, the, the world is used to. Uh, you know, uh, you 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 learn a lot. Yeah, you learn a lot, and uh, and and like I said, the uh, uh, and that's that's the part that attracted me to 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 to, to start. In other words, to 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 see the actual design from the ground up. Mm. Right from no, you know, yeah. and uh, not only from the electrical <laughs> uh, from the electrical right. side, which is the area of expertise that uh, that, that that I have, but also from learning from the mechanical side and from the structural side, uh, you know, from the power plant areas, you know, the engines mm-hmm. and, and then and the fuel systems and all of that. You typically don't do that when you're, uh, you know, you don't get to the level of detail when when you're working on the. Uh, you know, in the, in the military side, right? So because you get to see contract. the sausage. Yeah, you get to see the sausage right. being made, right? You get to see all the the, the conflicts, the trade offs, all the right. things that you know that work, but maybe not the best that you what you think would be the best design. But you know, it's a comp. It's everything's a compromise, um, right? In yeah. terms of just There's, engineering side of it, right, right. And, and go ahead. Then. Well, how, how did that progress until you get closer to certification? Now, you, you come in, when you came in, things were still pretty happy, and they had they were flush with cash. Uh, movie stars were coming to Albuquerque to check out the <laughs> aircraft. I remember a time when I was there, like, hey, Tom Cruise is in the building. You can't go here right. or there or somewhere. And I think, oh, okay. Tom, so Tom that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, Tom Cruise and Penelope, Penelope Lopez, I think he was dating yeah. at that time, and yeah. came by to the laboratory to see things up because uh, Tom Cruise is a pilot, right? And, and then also yeah, uh, John Travolta came by. Oh, Travolta was there. Yeah. That's right. I forgot oh, about yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, and I guess they were competing uh, between the two to see which one will be the spokesperson for Eclipse. Hmm. And I believe uh, John Travolta won. And he ended up getting a free aircraft as far as I know. 
Oh, really? Okay. He did the same thing with Bombardier, oh, actually. Yeah, he, I think he is an ambassador for Bombardier. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you yeah, when I, you, I believe that's right. Yeah. yeah. When you give away a free aircraft, yeah. do they get like the kind of crappier one that's maybe got like a little, you know, no. like you spilled, co- you <laughs> no. spilled, you spilled no. coffee in the seat? No, you know, no, no, no. They, that is not how it works. <laughs> no. They, yeah. they get a nice one because they have the okay. spoke people, right? So if, if they yeah. see something wrong with the aircraft, they don't want, yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, 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 he still has it, as far as I know. Because if you, uh, I think oh. I saw somewhere in that he's he's got this place. I don't remember where he lives, but he's had this. Uh, I think he has a seven. He had a seven oh seven at one se- point. Seven oh seven, yeah. He was flying around, yeah. And he also has uh, a little eclipse right next to it, right in, uh, in his parking <laughs> space. It's, it's funny to see those two, right? yeah. But the Eclipse jet was, uh, was awesome. It, it, as a product, it was awesome. I got to oh, yeah. fly many. I got to fly in it many times. So, yeah. so did Alan. So did you. Yeah, I, I did. When we were, when, <laughs> not by choice, remember, but yeah. No, no by choice. Remember, remember, hey, remember Alan, when, uh, there's a flight here. I think you're going to be on it. I'm going to go have some dinner. I'll see you when you get back. <laughs> right. Remember yeah. when we went when we went to do those precipitation precipitation? Oh Santa my Santa gosh! We went, uh, <laughs> and you got me <laughs> stuck up in Montana with a broken airplane that day. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> oh, that's right. I, I remember that. Yeah. 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 We got stuck with a broken airplane, Hector. I, it was a Saturday. It was a Friday night. And it was a Friday <laughs> night, and and you said, "Well, we're going to go fly. To, they're going to fly to Montana, and they're going to come back on Saturday." And like, ah, that's cool. I'll go. I'll go along with that. And we're going to have steak. We're going to go up to Montana. And we're going to have steak. Like, this is hey, I, this is awesome, I, right? I, <laughs> but I, what, I, 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 and I you weren't going. Is- I wasn't going. Yeah, I didn't go to that one. Not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't go on that one. Yeah, and I thought, why isn't Hector coming? But okay, you know, it's 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 a steak. It's a free steak dinner, and I'm totally up to you know flying an airplane. Let's go. So we go to Montana. We land, and you know, we did go get that steak dinner, and it was delicious. And then the next morning, we started to head out, and the airplane had an issue. And we had to come back down to land, and then we were stuck in Montana. And we just eventually the, the uh, that was Bill Bubb at the time. He was a flight test pilot. Yeah, yeah. yeah good guy. But, um, but, but like yeah, you were saying, Alan, you know, as, as, as the team progresses and, and you're getting closer to to the certification dates and so forth and so on, the stress obviously increases. Oh, yeah. Right the last six that, months. Right? How, explain to us what the last six months was oh, like because you did certify that aircraft. It did finish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We ended up certifying. As a matter of fact, one of the areas that got certified first was the, was the uh, HERF side. That's the high-intensity yeah, field yeah. side. And I remember we went, I took the, uh, me and a crew uh, from Eclipse, uh, we went to uh, Pat River, uh, Maryland, to uh, to a Navy base there. Yeah, that's near Dan. Uh, yeah. And, mm-hmm. yeah, and um, I knew those guys in Maryland. I put, I put, I knew the guys over there in uh, in NSWC, uh, Naval Weapon uh, Center Division, and I don't remember the acronyms anymore. Uh, people that I worked with when I was uh, working for the Air Force, and and uh, because when I worked for the Air Force, I not only dealt with the Air Force, but I also worked with the Navy. Yeah. Uh, as part of the Air Force, I worked with the Navy and yeah. and, and and the Marines and and and, and the Army uh, aircraft related things. And, and Pac River was the premier organization on the military side to do uh, to do uh, uh, electromagnetic evaluation for aircraft before the for military aircraft uh, at that and you, time you, because, you guys did it differently than most other people were doing it at the time because you actually right. took the whole airplane out we, we didn't take we, the we, system out and put it on a bench at a lab you actually took the whole airplane out right and we over. exposed when we exposed the aircraft to the full threat at that time right uh, for her right and, yep. And, yep. and and when you do that uh, and at that time I was already a DER and yeah. so I had yeah. to sit down in the cockpit together with the pilot, because the airplane has to be running, the engine yeah. runnings and everything else, and then you put the aircraft on a flight profile, and then you start shooting at it with the electromagnetic wave, right? And then you you see what happens and blah, 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 blah. So that was... Uh, that was unique thing. at the time, Hector. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, you didn't have an outside yeah. perspective on that, but the, the rest of the industry is like, what is going on and how are they going to do this? And then you just... Took that program yeah, and just I guess, I bang, guess we're going to do it, and you did it. You totally did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The thing is that per- perhaps they were not aware of the uh, capabilities that the militaries ha- had, which yeah. I knew, right? And I took, yeah, you know. I, you know, I took, I took uh, uh, advantage of that. So to 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 minimize 
that, that lens because as, as you know Alan, you go system oh, by the system, time by system yeah, and yeah, then you forever. do the low level aircraft test on top of that and then you compare the two to see if your system tests were fine and so forth and right. so in this case we did the whole Japan in a single thing and it took us you know it took us about uh, I don't remember exactly but it was a few weeks it was a couple of weeks you, I remember you, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to illuminate the aircraft from many angles and, and so forth and so on so different antenna heights and and so on and so forth and you know and this was for for her so you got to go from 10 kilohertz all the way to uh, 18 gigahertz Eight, and yeah, 18 gig, change, yeah. yeah you have to change all the uh, uh, you know amplifiers but it was awesome working with the navy uh, like i said i knew i knew the management side of the navy at that point and and uh, working on the in this organization that they were very helpful and, and so it was good so so eclipse took, in the past uh, right you you made the oh, thing work oh, it passed oh it passed yeah it passed yeah. yeah and after it passed i remember you know calling my management and they said guys we passed and <laughs> I'm okay with it. If we pass, I will, you know, I will, at that time, I think, it. I will, yeah, I said, I will approve it. And, you know, because I was very happy with the, uh, with the, with the result yeah. because I was yeah. in the cockpit, you know, and, and looking at all that. Yep. And, and then now, you know, we have to write a report, but at the end, it passed. Yeah. Management, and that was the first test that Eclipse did. And boom, we passed. And management was so happy that it says, hey, Hector, you know, Go ahead, take the entire team out, have fun. And so we did. We had fun. I had the entire Eclipse team, not only the Eclipse team, but also the uh, the Navy guys. Uh, and we had a great time. We had, it, it, it was awesome. It was a very nice experience to me. That was my first uh, certification test, really. Well, that was a huge and, test. And, it was, yeah. that was, the whole yeah. effort was huge. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, I remember I remember at that time, my, my advisor at the FAA was this lady. And uh, and she wanted because I was a new DER, she wanted to come and see what was happening. Yeah. And of course, she was observing from afar, right? She was not in the airplane. True. And if after about a day or two, you know, I told her, look, you know, you came all the way from Fort Worth, you know, instead of just sitting there, come and get in the cockpit, you know, and she was, you know, she was afraid of getting in the cockpit because she was being, she's going, she was going to be radiated with the... Well, you were going to be radiated. Yeah, of yeah, course. Well, you, <laughs> then, you totally but, were, yes. Yeah, but, yeah. but you wear, you I wear these, uh, yeah, you, you, you wear these, radi uh, these radiation badges to tell you for safety That's, reasons. You do, you, have you to do. wear that, you do. right? Yeah. To make sure that, that you are not exceeding the uh, OSHA standards and so forth. That, that's true, right. And, it's not a and, safety uh, risk, but... Right, yeah. safety risk, right. But I remember she, after about you know, about <laughs> half an hour, I don't know how long she did, she just decided to stop, stop, stop. She got out of the airplane. She she, she didn't feel comfortable, I guess. And uh, and but she enjoyed she enjoyed herself. Uh, and and uh, it was a good experience for her. And at oh, the end, yeah. she said, Hector. I said, at the end, she said, Hector, I'm glad you do this instead of me. So I said, okay, <laughs> yeah, and stuff like that. So well, that, that was uh, a that, that was a big a thing. Experience. Yeah, it yeah. was a very big thing even for the industry because no one had really taken that approach to compliance yet. And for her, and I think a couple of reasons. One, you know, you had a smaller aircraft and you could do things with it that other right. larger aircraft right. couldn't have done. Right. And you had a couple of airplanes to play with and the airplanes, relatively speaking, were a lot less right. expensive than like a 737. Right. So you could you could right. do stuff like that. Yeah, but we, but we ended up working. Yeah, we ended up working about uh, well, two two shifts, right? Uh, and each shift extended hours on each shift to be able to to do it in the time that we did. Not exactly. Yep. Long. I think about two weeks or three weeks. I think the, the whole thing. So you uh, finished you finished that, and then then then, then uh, what I rem remember from that was the well, push was on to get to, to to get to to type certification like the. The, the money was getting tight in the program. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, it's one of those times where it's really hard to get investors because there's been a lot of money spent and they don't want to put any money into it. Everybody wants to cash, get to production so they can start uh, reaping the benefits mm -hmm. of all their, all their, all their yeah. time and labor. Those, those last, if I remember correctly, there was a lot of turbulence in the company uh, oh, yeah. in the last couple of months. And uh, as a DER, you're, you're just stuck in the middle of it. So you're sitting there watching right. this sort of chaos go on and it's nothing personal, but at the same time, there's pressure from management, financial pressure from management. There's mm -hmm. inner, 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 you know, managerial squabbles 
from one person to another because the pressure gets so much and no one's sleeping properly and everybody's not eating right and and uh, and there's, there's alcohol involved in some cases and so um, yeah. what were those last couple of weeks like how did oh, you get they, through all that well you know the first few months were because the company was not doing that well financially and so forth and so on and and they were losing engineers and 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 the good you know the good thing is that uh, they would come and people that really needed needed to stay you know they will they will offer you more money for you to stay yeah? Yeah. so you don't leave right and stuff like right. that because people at that time they knew that they knew something was going to happen and they were starting to look for other for other uh you know for other employment and so forth and, and the other companies see was, that too right they see all these this talented group of oh, people yeah. sitting there and that's, knowing that's, that they, uh, yeah. and they start making phone calls yeah absolutely as a matter of fact that uh, the companies in wichita you know the aircraft companies in wichita yeah. and, uh, that you're aware yeah. of <laughs> yeah they used to fly airplanes to 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 albuquerque you know to to get people engineers to fly them back to wichita for interviews and wow and, and things like that and uh, you know, they had because, billboards up too at one point. I think I remember oh, seeing oh, billboards oh, yeah. Yeah, for companies in Wichita. We want, yeah, we, we want you back. <laughs> right. <laughs> we Talk you. about you know subliminal like, messaging. Yeah, you're driving to work. Yeah, you yeah. see a billboard for a Wichita yeah. air, air, air that, company. That, yeah. That's what that's that's what this company did, right? So yeah, they they totally went, they recruited the best you know the best from the industry and. To be able to build this thing, and and so um, I, I, I companies from Wichita were hit hard in, in that sense. Uh, as far as losing engineers, that and they came to, to to New Mexico, and but anyway, the last the last the last three months in the company was very 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 stressful. Uh, you know, because you didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, and when exactly was going to happen? You knew something was. It wasn't going. It was going. It was going down. Yeah. In some sort of fashion, and, and it was. But you know, uh, we were sort of mentally preparing, mentally, you know, uh, for it. And and one day, you know, uh, everybody got uh, got uh, uh, management asked everybody to gather in the uh, uh, in the flight test uh, uh, hangar. The whole company got there, yeah. and that's what uh, they they just told us everybody to everybody. You know, I work close in the company. Pick up a few things, and good luck, basically. Uh, that was very stressful for many people. And in my in my situation, in my case, I was lucky enough because of my. Because I've been in Albuquerque for so long, and, and yeah. because of my contacts in the uh, private industry when I worked for the military and also from the civilian side at that point, uh, once that uh, once the uh, the team the, the, you know the close was announced, right away I started to get phone calls, and a colleague of mine, uh, that the uh, CEO of your industry, is right away called me and says, "Hey, Hector." You know, come, come work for me, and, and this and that, and, and uh, yep. you get all these calls, right? And uh, yeah. and luckily at that point, I was one of the lucky ones. You know, uh, I was offered a job on the spot, just the same day, basically, that uh, that people were working out. And at that point, I told I told a piece of friend of mine, uh, Bill Mira. Yeah, uh, I told him, Bill, thank you very much, Bill, but you know, I need a break. So, <laughs> right, said, hey, you did. Uh, you did. Said, yeah, and your wife needed <laughs> a break said, too, hey. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I was lucky to see my wife, at, you know, because at that time, you know, most of the time you spend it at the company, right? Yeah. And uh, so I took about a month uh, break at that time, and I told him, "Look, if you're willing to wait for me," uh, I'm, uh, he said, "He said, Hector, you got a job. Go ahead, take a break, come back, and." You know, take the time you need. Call me back when I, whenever you're ready. Uh, you are it. Can you can you commit to me? And I said, okay, Bill, I'll commit to you. But let me take the time. And, and that's what happened. And then I I joined uh, uh, that that company with us both military and also commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined as vice president of engineering at that point. Oh, well, you had earned it. So yeah. And then I worked. Yeah. You earned. And you I earned worked it. for them for a. Yeah, yeah, and 
uh, you know, and and so I was there for many years, and I got a good experience with them. I mean, and basically, what I ended up doing is working with the same, uh, you know, uh, when but uh, on the contractor side now, as opposed to the government side now, working with the same people. I work on the government. Yeah. You know, when I was working on the Air Force, but, but at but that, this point I was working that, on the commercial side as a contractor. So you but, went but also, from, you know, I. Well, you, at the same you, time, you, 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 know, you, you, Go ahead. Go. Well, I just wanted to answer a quick question here, which is: you yeah. went from yeah. sort of the the government's uh, being a civilian in the government military environment into a, a quasi Silicon Valley sort of environment, and then once you had your DER ticket and you had all this experience too, you were now essentially, even though you went to work for another company, you were essentially mm -hmm. you were the company. You were you were your own person at that point. You could yeah you that, go right. And, yeah. So you had earned right. you had earned your stripes in some sense, and I don't want. You know, <laughs> it's in a sense that's kind of what happened, though. But you had been through this ring of fire, or multiple rings of fire, and been vetted by the industry, and so everybody knew, uh, whoever you know, all the people that made it out the other side of Eclipse, you knew right. that they were battle worn, that they had seen the worst that they're ever going to see, and everybody goes through that, and it's not an Eclipse specific thing. Pretty much every aircraft program will go through the same set of circumstances. Right. Um, right. But you come out the other side, and now you have just a completely different perspective on what it takes, right? You, you, right. you have this, this bag of knowledge which you only get by going through it. Right. And, and the thing what I did is when I joined uh, Fiori at that time, Fiori was mainly uh, supporting military work. Mm -hmm. When I came in, like you said, I was already an FAA DER, a consultant. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, I take it back. I was a... Uh, you were a company at first, time, right? I was a company, right. Yeah. It's a company. And yeah. as soon as I got out of that, I submitted my application to, to be a consultant. Yeah. And because of my reputation with the FAA, I got that ticket very quickly. That's, right. Yeah, I was, that's right. Remember I was converted yeah. from, uh, from, from company to a consultant. The, uh, so, so I brought that ticket to... To Fiori and alone, uh, you know, uh, I brought uh, programs to Fiori because I was a DR. And, and, and I remember you contacted me, me at, at just about a month or so after. Yeah. At that time, you were working for Embry Air, I believe, and you needed yeah. help. And you, yeah, you called me, and, and then, you know, both of us, uh, no, not Embry Air, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Learjet. Uh, Learjet, yeah, we worked a long time for Bombardier. Learjet, only yeah. 85, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, and, and that uh, you, you then you start working on like on a, on a number of different programs, and oh, yeah. you and I have worked oh, yeah. together on a number of different projects from small to large. Yeah, I and will, it, yeah we work. Yeah, we work Learjet. We work Honda. Yeah, yeah there's a like there's a number of different ones. I know I didn't. I think each of us had our own sort of brought our own skill sets. You, you have this huge RF skill set that you know is just really unmatched. Right. And then I. I worked at lightning technology so i had this testing experience stuff you know when you put the two of us together we we're pretty potent um so we ended up getting paired quite a bit on, on these aircraft programs because we all have our, our strange little skill sets and in in your case i, I think one of the things because you're you know i don't say you're getting up in age but you're older than me obviously no hector hector is uh, a very he is a very young personality i'll put it to you that way uh, and he'll go out dancing and he's like man hector i, I gotta hit the sack man. <laughs> uh, yeah so uh the thing the, the thing you have been through the gamut and i i think it's hard to find people that are have been through all this all these different had these different experiences in life uh and to provide some perspective over it all you, do you when you kind of look back at because in the eclipse and doing being being basically being an independent person at this point and having your own having your own mm -hmm. business and running a business on your own which you have done for a number of years and then mm -hmm. you know all the way from coming out of school what would you was that would that be a path that you would recommend to to young engineers coming out of school? Is that is that or or is you like you know wisdom looking back? I would have done it differently, and I would have changed that pathway. Or what what are your thoughts on that? No, actually, Alan, I, I am very happy with that with the path that I took. Um, I don't regret uh, any of it. Uh, I had a good experience when I worked for the Department of Defense uh, and on both organizations. In the first one. 
because the because the kind of work was more operational as opposed to engineering type of thing i didn't enjoy it as much but after that when i joined the uh, the research side it, 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 you know and then from there moving on to the commercial side uh, uh aviation side and then back uh to to as a contractor supporting the government and then doing my own company i i uh, you know, establishing my own company and stuff like that. Uh, I had a great time along the line. And, and you know, uh, it depends on the personality and what your goals are. You know, yeah. some people probably may not be, have been able to handle it, you know, especially working for a company such as a startup like that, like, like yeah. I was exposed to. Yeah, it was, like I said, it was very stressful, but at the same time, it was enjoyable. And, met a lot of great people, very talented engineers at yeah. this point. And, uh, and, and I, I think people that, like, meeting people like you, Alan, and, and, and Andy, you know, that uh, are well known in the industry on the lighting side, right? And, and travel with you guys together and, and you know, establishing friendship like that, it meant a lot to me. And, well, and I, so it, it that, means a lot to me too. Yeah. Yeah. From yeah. that perspective, means, you know, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, and I think I, I I I think you have you you bring a certain um, flair and, and sort of joy for it. Um, I don't always see that in engineers. You know, sometimes it's, it's if you've done it as long as as you have, or even I'm getting up that way. Is it, you know, there's there's just some sometimes people just wear out and they just kind of get tired of, of <laughs> all the all the clashes and all the things that come along with it. But I I think you know you and I both kind of see it as for what it is and and um yeah you know you're going to get into the clashes it's going to be hard times there's going to be some sleepless nights and all that comes along with it but it, it's still pretty exciting it is still oh, pretty yeah. exciting oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah well and it seems yeah. like you know they talk about the job market with you know with engineers and even in silicon valley with so many talented you know software minds and coding minds and whatever they're still yeah. bringing in people over from overseas not because um they're they're just not enough talented you know, American workers, you know, an American engineer. That's correct. I, true. I, I assume that's, true. that's still the case here where, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but engineering is still an amazing field to go in and have economic stability for your family and just pave out a really good life. Right. Yeah. You know, arrows, if, if, yeah. Go ahead. Ed. Go ahead. Ed. Yeah, well, it, I just, it feels good. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, listen, <laughs> Hector, we want to hear what you have to say. Alan, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Calm so, down. Yeah, you got me all the time. It, 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 yeah, it feels good, you know, <laughs> that uh, when, when you work through, 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 this, uh, through these programs like Alan and I have through the years, it's, got, it's, 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 it's rewarding to see that uh, companies appreciate your expertise and, and, and this and that. And uh, like I said, I had the opportunity to work for you know, uh, with with the Canadians, uh, aviation and and Japan and different programs yeah, in Japan and and the same thing here in the U.S. Multiple programs in the U.S. and even even Brazil. You know, they they find out your name and oh, the blue, you get a call from someone <laughs> that uh, you, know, you want to support Brazil. You know, and work with yeah. a different with a different uh, type of uh, regulatory agency. In the, in that yeah. case, uh, it's ANAC as opposed to FAA, ANAC mm -hmm. is a Brazilian organization, and work with uh, not only with ANAC and and in in the in the Brazil side and in FAA on the in the uh, uh, here in the US, but also with uh, with uh, C, uh, this, uh, TCCA Transport Canada, I forget that. Transport Canada, and then, yeah. yeah, Transport Canada in Canada, and then obviously, and then also with the ASA, you know. And uh, it, 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 it was a good experience as an engineer. And uh, uh, the challenges were, were great, you know, and uh, uh, you work hard and that is rewarding. So financially, both financially and, and also uh, professionally, I, I guess I should say. Uh, don't you feel that way too, Alan? Because you, you did a lot of work with everybody else too. So. Yeah, uh, you know, there's, uh, I, I think the, the thing I always worry about and probably you do too, is like what the effect was on the kids. You know, your, your, wife oh, yeah. along, oh, yeah. your wife's along for the ride, right? She's, um, yeah, I, I was lucky. <laughs> she knows what's coming on some level because you're telling them all the time. <laughs> but the kids are sort of innocent, innocent bystanders and all this. And I think that's the hardest part is trying to. Yeah, that, that's you know, one thing though. You're, you're correct about that, Alan, because it, it takes away from your family a lot. 
It does. Right. And and uh, to yeah. give to give credit to my wife, you know, she did most of the uh, raising the kids, and I did, you know. Uh, yeah, it, and, and but she, at, at some point good, you she did a good job. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, totally did. And it, the, the the thing about you know eventually becoming an independent uh, DER in your case a consultant DER is then you have some control over that. I think right. that's but you have to pay your dues in some sense before you can get to that point where you can decide, hey, I'm going to work this project and I'm not going to work that one, or I'm going to take I'm going to take Friday off because it's Friday and I want to see my kids and right. that's, that's, but you had to do all those other things to get to this point. That, that's the hard part where I think everybody wants to have all the, the, the fun. It's not, I wouldn't say this is a fun job as much as it is a responsible job uh, because you are putting people's lives in your hands. I and mean, especially in our line of field, we're dealing with lightning protection and, and we have to deal with essentially every system on an aircraft um, right. There's a lot. There's a lot of stake. There's a, there is a lot of stake there still. Yes. Yeah. Not, not only not only the electrical from the lighting side. Not only the electrical systems are them, but you know, but yeah. also the structural aspects of it. And, Structure, you know, hydraulics, uh, mechanics, mechanics, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So that you get a, you you learn a lot about the other disciplines as you go along, and that's rewarding. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the most rewarding thing about doing lightning protection. And her, for the same matter, is that. Yeah. I get to see every part of the airplane, not just the right. avionics system or the hydraulic system. I get to see all of it, and that's the, that's a fun. It keeps it interesting, I I think. Yeah. And learn and learn the design aspects of that of those areas that we typically, as electrical engineers, we don't see otherwise, right? Right. So so you learn that, and uh, and so for for all the for all of those reasons, you know, it's uh, it's something that. Uh, uh, I have very good experiences and, and uh, you know, happy with yeah. uh, with the, the paths that I chosen and, and so forth and so on. Yeah, and I, I've been I've been really glad to know you all these years. I mean, it's, it's got to be going on twenty years now. It seems like right. it's just. Right. I was telling my wife last night, how long have I known Hector? He said, oh, you know, it's <laughs> early two thousands. <laughs> yeah, it's been <laughs> it's it's been a while, yeah. and yeah. but it doesn't seem like that, you know. If we, yeah. if yeah. we get on to the next program, it's like we're all starting new again. It's 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 still new, fresh, and exciting. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, guys, well, um, this is an awesome talk. Hector, it's uh, great to hear your experience. Obviously, yeah. um, you know, a long storied career and you've done a lot of interesting things. And, um, you know, my dad was an engineer and, and so I've, I lived a lot of these similar experiences just quietly. I didn't want to throw that in there, but, um, you know, like we saw the, the same thing, a lot of travel, you know, for me as, as the, the kid growing up with a, an engineer father and, um, but also, like you said, like you paved out a very rewarding life for us. And as it sounds like both you and Alan have done for, for your families and done important work. So and that's, I think, the big thing. You guys are, you know, important in so many different ways. I mean, air travel connects the world, you know. So, um, so Hector, thank you again for being on the show. Yeah, thanks, Hector. Okay. Appreciate so, it. Th thank you, Dan. Thank you, Alan. Yeah, nice talking for, to you guys. Yeah, and um, stay safe out there in Albuquerque. And for all of you <laughs> listening, um, thank you for joining us here again on the Struck Podcast. Uh, mm -hmm. Subscribe on iTunes, uh, sh share with a friend, check us out on YouTube, Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts, and we will catch you here next time. Mm -hmm.